the popularity of a data value. It's how popular a data value is. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to create this frequency table. Okay? It's a frequency table. It's represented by a scripted F for frequency. And so is it true that, okay, I mean, what is, what is the popularity of a data value? What does that mean? Right? Anybody vote for a, any prom queens here? No? Good. One prom queen? Okay, we voted for prom queens, right? And you guys notice that when you vote for a prom queen, you're really voting for what? Is, is, is a prom queen really the most beautiful girl in school? Very often what? No. But is she the nicest? Mm, not my prom queen. Oh, she wasn't very nice. <laughs> Who are you voting for? The most popular. Is that right? For whatever reason, the most popular. And so the, the funny thing is when I think of this concept of frequency associated with the data value, I think of that. I think of, okay, you're going to vote or you're going to count how many votes that data value has. Is that right? You're determining the popularity of a data value. So if I look at my candidates, right, my data values, it's my data. What do I know? Well, I got the zero data value. I have a one data value. And I'm going to put down two, even though there's no twos there. We'll talk about why. I'm going to put the data value three. Why do you think I'm going to stop at three? Well, if I put four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, then, I mean, where will I end? I'll never end. And if a data value is not even listed there, how popular is it? For example, the data value zero, right? How popular, how popular was zero? Here's what we can do. Let's, let's pretend we're in Florida and we're counting votes for GW. Did you guys know they had to do a tally, I guess, at one point? What's a tally? The stick marks, right? So let me look. Let's take a tally. How many votes does zero get? Well, you got this one vote, so you go through this mass, right? Oh, I got another one. Two, oh, three, four. What happens when you get to five? You cross it out, and then what? Oh, well, is that efficient? No, but is it a way we can actually count how often the zero shows up? Is that a, sort of a way we could do it? Yeah, we could do it this way, and it's useful, and sometimes you do. But sometimes it might be easier, it depends on the setting, to simply do what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, what? Fourteen. So the data value zero has a frequency of 14. Okay, Frequency of 14. That's how many votes. That's how popular zero is in that list. You guys OK with that? That's the frequency. Is that easy or is that hard? Easy, good. How popular is the number one? How many ones are there? One, two, three, what? Four. Are there four ones? Okay, how many, how popular is the data value two? How popular is it? Oh, not popular at all. No one voted for two. What does that mean? We count the votes, we're going to say what? Zero. Okay, what about three? Two, let's see. 
1, 2. Okay? Now, we don't have to write data, although this is what it is. What does this data represent? Does anybody know? What, what does this data represent? It's the number of what? Number of children. Good. So very often, you'll see in a frequency table simply the summary of what the data represents. In this case, it's number of children. Because we asked you, how many children do you have? And you responded. You gave us some data. OK? You guys OK with this? What is this called again? A what? A frequency table. Guess what you guys are going to have to do for some of your homework problems? Construct a frequency table. You guys okay with that? All righty. Um, this is one way we can organize data. We can create what's known as a frequency table. Another way is to create a relative frequency table. So if you're going to create a relative frequency table, you're going to need to know the definition of relative frequency. Is that right? You guys need to know that, right? Like I gave you the definition of frequency. So let me give you the definition of relative frequency. And again, the setting is for a data value. Um, it's abbreviated RF. And it's written down this way. It's F divided by N. Now let's think about this, right? What this simply means is, hmm, the relative frequency is defined to be this division. What is that division? It's this the frequency divided by number of data, number in your sample. That right, number of data values. So that every data value has an associated what? Relative frequency. Okay? So let's see. How do you think we create a relative frequency table now? We need two pieces of information. You need the frequency of a data value, you have it. You need the sample size. You have it, which simply means you are now able to construct a relative frequency table using the information you already have. All right? Now I'm going to talk about a few things that we're going to need to know in order to do this task, OK? So I'm going to put a note here. Let's note a few things. note. First of all, I'm going to give you another formula here. Um, what if I went and I did this to you? I removed this piece of information. I removed this piece of information. OK? And I still asked you to create a relative frequency table using this frequency table. OK? You guys OK with this? How are you going to deduce the sample size if I erased that original data? Anybody know how you do that? How would you do that? They just gave you a frequency table. You didn't go back and count. One, two, three, four. How would you do it? What would, what would we do? Why would you add the frequencies? Well, remember, if, you're, if the frequency is how popular the data value is, that means that there's 14 what? Zeros. There's four ones. There's zero twos. And there's two what? 